All right, welcome back. Thank you, Chef. Got us all set up. Our this is our audio video team right here. Nothing we can this accomplish. This is Chris, audio video specialist, Chef. Uh, I'm the Psalm. We're going to taste some wines virtually for those of you that can't be here in person in the barrel room on Thursday nights at 6 p.m. For those of you that we miss desperately, we are so glad that you can watch with us and taste along with us. If you'd like to be a part of this, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, give us a call up the winery and find out how you can be a part of the virtual tasting. It's a great package. It's 50 bucks, two bottles of wine, and tasting kit to go along with it. It's a really sweet deal. I mean, I don't know how you do better. And, uh, oh yeah, by the way, the wines are delicious. But I might be a little biased because I pick them all. No, actually, I'm going to agree with you. They're all del always we delicious, always different, always something to learn and enjoy. If you if you happen to make it here in downtown Mount Airy, you can taste four wines with us in person. So you get a double the amount. That means... And you get four different food items. That's right. Oh. And we, uh, we taste... 200 wines a year doing that so it's a great what opportunity great opportunity to to learn the wines of the world not just be randomly selecting wines by you know some score system or by some employees you know employees pick you know like the little tag they put on the wines like <coughs> does which this, does this know. employee know anything about wine? i don't know maybe this employee likes sweet wines i don't like sweet wines you know, uh, just, or they're I'm just, just somebody they see buy a lot of what, a certain wine. What do you well, know? So and so buys. Yeah, wouldn't wine. you rather just taste wine and then you would know if you liked it? You have to take the word. So, trust your own senses. Come here, taste wine, or do the do the virtual tasting, and then you know what you like and what you don't. When you know, you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Boy, it's gonna be delicious. I can already tell. Oh, it's gonna be delicious. I'm real thirsty today, Chef. What's new? Give us, a, give us something we didn't know. Well, I just thought that would comfort you. Yeah. Well, I will say this: you're an easy man to pour for because you really appreciate vino. So we're gonna start off in Burgundy. We're gonna start in the southern tip, if you will, uh, Beaujolais. This is from Pizet. Uh, absolutely love this producer for all all their uh, beautiful. Uh, let me see if I can get this thing to focus. There you go. There, can right you see that there. kind of in that cute little white one? Anyway, this is Gamay. They also make great Pinots as well, but uh, Gamay is the dominant grape of Beaujolais. Uh, probably 99% of everything grown there would be my guess, but that might, that's, just a, that's just a guess. It might be only 98%, so I might be totally exaggerating, but you get the idea. They specialize in this beautiful red grape that is so incredibly versatile. This is a grape that Chef Chris and I, you can almost, it's almost predictable how many times it shows up at a chef's yep. table because Chef likes to mix things like seafood with things that go with red wine. And so if you like seafood and you like red wine, welcome to Beaujolais because this is gonna help your life get a lot easier and a lot more delicious. Okay, Beaujolais tends to have a lot of characteristics structurally of a white wine, um, you know, being a little bit less, uh, you know, it's not tannicky, it's not uh, overly the top, uh, you know, voluptuous. It has a pretty, it's pretty light on its feet, I would say, texturally, like a white wine is oftentimes. I don't, you know, these are generalizations, of course. But of course, you get this beautiful red fruit. I almost always get raspberries out of out of, out of this this produ this production, and uh, well, I've had it before, Chef. I don't think you've had this particular one. God knows I've poured you a lot of different Beaujolais, but have you had this one before? Did you do this Sunday? I don't think I don't know if you did or not. No, we had a Beaujolais Sunday. I don't think it was this one. No, Ooh, I don't think man. I haven't had this. This is uh, this is this big time. Big. Big, big, time. big juicy flavor big, here. Juicy flavor, raspberry um, for sure. Yeah, more cheer wine. Right? Yeah, cheer, cheer wine. wine. Yeah, I like that one. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. Well, um, there's plenty of acidity little there. A little bit of blueberry. A little bit of blueberry. Yeah, I, I mean, not mostly yeah. red, but yep. I'm getting that. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I ate a lot of blueberries today. Yeah. Well, I picked a bunch of blueberries. That 
Elizabeth's dad's. That was. And I also have the thirty-seven mosquito bites to prove ah, it. Those right. Fayetteville mosquitoes are no joke. People. They're pterodactyls. Luckily, it was only ninety-nine degrees. Oh, in so the cold spell rolled yeah, through Fayetteville. Yeah, but there, you know, there was a breeze. So instead of feeling like an oven, I felt like I was in a convection oven. A convection oven. So it was crispy. <laughs> Well, no one <laughs> likes a floppy fat. You no, want no, fat. yeah, yeah. You want it nice and crispy. So, yeah, we, I picked a lot of blueberries, and I ate probably just as many. Yeah, well, right. That's the problem. You can't. Two, how two, do you fill two. up a basket of blueberries when you're eating them the whole time? Well, better using the birds. Well, yeah, that's true. Those birds, they're, they're, they're everywhere. So, uh, we have here a fruity... Uh, easy to drink red that is so incredibly versatile you can have it with any kind of uh, vegetable dish that I mean I can't think of a vegetable dish this wouldn't go with also great with chicken love love it with chicken and then of course seafood now maybe not like flounder like something that's like super thin and, and but most seafoods I think would this would work particularly shellfish particularly shellfish mm -hmm. like yeah. uh, I don't and know tuna and so, salmon, I mean, salmon. I'm rolling the dice on lobster risotto yeah. with a crispy Darcy Farm pork chow dip. Oh, definitely. With a cow vander cheese and French soil. Is that something you're talking about doing? That's what's going with it. Really? That's, that's the verdict. You're going to give them lobster ravioli. Oh, no, risotto. Riso sorry, risotto. And Darcy Farm's pork chow. Like that, that, that's One, like, two. isn't it like $100, $100 a pound? One, two. What's that? That Darcy Farms pork jaw, isn't it like $100 a pound? He had to have that shipped off, didn't he? Yeah. Have it smoked it for cheap. 30 days. It ain't cheap. They actually cured it for 30, smoked it for three. Oh, okay. So it 33 days of, of, of love. Treatment. Yeah. And uh, it is it is not pedestrian, my friend. Oh, it's amazing. It is. Uh, anyway, got to share it. These are our favorite people. Well, lucky y'all. Enjoy. So... Another thing about, you know, those are like pork, 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 all pork, day pork, long, pork, pork, pork. Day. Brunch, kind of pork, brunch stuff, eggy stuff, hammy, hammy hams, stuff, ham quiche, sausage, you name it. It's, yep. a, it's all worth it. The, uh, what was that, uh, that fresh salumi you had that one time? Oh, the, uh, the Dahlia. It was in, like, uh, in Duya. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. That was, that was, it almost, Almost had the spice of a shrizo. Mm -hmm. I think that would also go well here. A little bit less. I mean, it has a, it has a, it shares the same spice as the chorizo, just not as much pepper. Yeah, yeah. So it's. Uh, I felt like it had a lot of paprika. It did a lot of paprika. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, those all those flavors. You know, great thing about when you're when you're when you're pairing spicy things with red wine, you need to make sure that the red wines don't have a lot of tannins because mm -hmm. the tannins make things even hotter. Mm -hmm. And not like. You know, hey, I want to make this hotter in a good way because you like things hot. It's more of like the the downside of heat, mm. you know, because there's there's it there's, it there's won't plus. Drown. It won't drown. Yeah. Mm. It won't yeah. drown. Like yeah. normally when it you're eating hot of, things, you're flushing and yeah, tannins yeah. retained. Yeah, they're just they're just tying it right mm -hmm. into you. Uh, you know, it's just torture and in 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 not in a good way. Not in a good See, way. See, I like I like eating. So, Dad, uh, when I was down there, he grew some habaneros and uh. Oh, and some, yeah. yeah, you were in heaven. Oh, you? yeah, but they will light you up. Mm -hmm. So you, you need something that helps kind of move that along, those, move those oils off your tongue, and tannins tend to bind to it and just kind of it turns into concrete of spice on your tongue. So Yeah, so it's no longer if you're If you're having something a little spicy, you know, like jambalaya or, or gumbo or something where you can heat it up a little, you know, with your peppers, this would work. This would certainly oh, work. absolutely. This Particularly because, like, if you have chicken, sausage, and seafood in it. Yeah, and, the, and, and that okra, rich, the rich tomato. Peppers, yeah, tomatoes. Yeah, peppers, yeah. yeah, peppers, yeah, yeah. peppers for days in, in yeah. gumbo and jambalaya. But, uh, yeah, that, that dish you're giving them is going to um, make the webs have to take out a second mortgage on this place. Well, you know, I'm not serving a pail of it. You know, it's just going to be a, a spoonful. <laughs> just mess with each other. But no, you're right. I mean, you know, it's, it's wonderful. Certainly. What a treat! We're not uh, we're not normally in the lobster pork chow game. Ah, man, that for is this a, format. Man, but you know, uh, as luck would have it, this is a great time of year to have lobster. Um, the the uh, price is really coming down. The summer uh, um, 
soft shell is in full swing, so the lobsters are a little softer. Shells are going through their molt and yeah. all, all that stuff, so you know you're not seeing a lot of lobster center of the plate stuff. Like yeah, that. yeah. Because it is a little softer right now, but it's a great time of year for lobster meat to do things like risottos the and flavor. stews. The yeah. flavor is just mm -hmm. outstanding, but yeah. the price is down, and so right. uh, it, it is a bit more advantageous to do little things like this. So you'll see some plays on lobster here for the next few weeks while prices are advantageous. Yeah, that's a, that's a smart play there to, to keep everybody uh, in the loop for value as well. You know? Well, that's what you do with wines. That's what I try to do on the food side of it. Of course, <clears throat> you know, we, we don't, uh, we, we, we like to see what's best and just raise the price. <laughs> right. You know, we're not going to, you know, we're always looking for value. But, yep. you know, value is, you can only appreciate it if it's got the quality attached to it. Well, that's and, of why course, you, this does now. Yeah, you buy all that really high-end uh, caviar, but it's the experience that, I mean, the pr you can't compare the, that to the price of an apple, obviously, because right. you're not getting the same experience out of it. You know, sometimes apples are freaking expensive. Oh, well, and that's a true story. And, you know, really, you know, and also, yeah, I think we do a good job. You know, when we, we serve golden ocetra or beluga caviar you know you're we're using it as an ingredient you know we don't serve it as a, a caviar taste with a bottle of champagne yeah, yeah with all the traditional caviar accompaniments where the caviar is what you're eating and everything else accentuates it we're actually using caviar to accentuate other things and so it's oh, just, always been a just want to give you a heads up on my wine order coming in tomorrow it's a big wine order sorry but I had one of the Looks best. like we're working late again all week. Yeah. One of those, uh, I had, uh, last week, I've just been really fortunate. The, you know, my distributors and purveyors are so, they're so good to me. They, they let me taste delicious wines. And there was this British. <laughs> they're on to something, aren't mm, they? They keep bringing samples. I keep they? buying them. <laughs> what are you doing it's this funny how that Oh, I'm pretty much spending the whole week at the winery. Yeah. Pouring for it. Yeah. So this uh, beautiful British rosé, uh, it's like champagne style, you know, the traditional method, champenois uh, method, and uh, that is going to be absolutely glorious for the chef's table. I can't wait. And where's my sample? Well, um, yeah. Well, it disappeared into my it's belly, in my gullet. Under the yeah. You just have to take my word for it, chef. You're going to love it. But yeah, if there's any left. But I'm really looking forward to that because when you, you know, we start, you know, I immediately got, because it's been really fresh on my mind how delicious that was. You know, a lot of people don't realize that, uh, well, they are making very, very high end bubbles in Great Britain. Well, I guess good cold area to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. In addition to that, you know, they, they, you know, they, you know, this is, you know, climate's changed. It always has changed. And, in, and so, People are like, oh, you know, they're making wine in Great Britain. You know, this is the end of the world. Well, they used to a thousand years yeah, ago. Yeah, so, I mean, so it's, it's like cycles. It, yeah, so it's actually been in a cold cycle, and it's just now coming, coming back. back. Yeah, right. and so there's uh, winners and losers in every well, in any event, right? So good or bad. So yeah. a thousand years ago, when they were making wine there. Nobody was crying that the world. It's was too in. warm. No, they weren't complaining. They were just drinking delicious wine. Everybody got mad that it got colder, and then France started getting in on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just uh, remember, uh, it's a cycle, folks. And you know, I'm sure we've played our part in, in raising the temperature some, but nothing can change the earth like Mother Nature itself. She's still uh, she's no, in she, control. She's in control. She mm -hmm. knows what's up. Mm. There's no doubt about it. All right. Well, Chef, I hate to move on from this because I'm really digging it. I'm not, I got I'm, a good I'm, idea. And for, for a light, I got a good idea. We can move on, and then we'll circle back around. For a light wine, though, it's got so I mean, like it's got so much character. And, and this is this is not village level. It's not crew level. And if you all don't know that this year, this year, but this is this is a absolute wonderful well, it's got entry level sub right twenty dollars. You know, again, again, we're bringing it. I think it's 17 or 18 bucks. It's nothing. Nothing for the, the for the for our clientele out there. 
they wouldn't bend over. If they dropped a twenty dollar bill, they wouldn't bend well, over to pick it up. Hell, like, yeah, you know, yeah. somebody would probably use that. Yeah, thing. yeah. I mean, this is this is nothing to you folks. You should enjoy these in twelve pack form. Absolutely. At I the, just adore at these this. prices. At that yeah. price, yeah. Mm. You can't beat it. And you know, it has a, 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 a you know, oftentimes it's grouped together with with Pinot Noir. That's quite mm. all right. I mean, because it's a heck of a lot more like Pinot Noir than well, Cab. I, I, it's it's I mean, as close I, to that description as any other one. But it is, if you compare Pinot to that head to head, this is different. It, it's a, it is a different grape. It has different characteristics, and they're they're it's wonderful. Yeah, you because know, we've been Pinot and like crazy ever since you got back from work. I mean, like. Yeah, we've, we've been geeking out on the Pinot, and that's cool. And it's nice that's to good. have a similar genre, but not Pinot. Well, I love the lightness of the gamut. Yeah. You know, because even Pinots, to me, can, can you know, kind of weight you down. They can, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they the, can. Those big, the ones those big you're dogs. buying. Well, and the ones you've yeah. been serving lately, too. I mean, you did another oh, Bell yeah. Loss, yeah, and that, uh, we had something Los else. Los Alteros, that was freaking big. And there was another one, too. Oh. Uh, oh, that one out of uh, Australia? Australia. Yeah, it was a beast. So, I mean, you know, the, the style you've been pouring lately, too, has been very uh, been very big, uh, which yeah, we're not complaining about big wines, but, no. yeah, for big Pinots, it's a little different. Yeah, we, just, we, uh, we, we, we have to keep moving around our palates. We can't just mm. sit on the same thing. I mean, you can, mm. but, you know, then you're just drinking to drink. If well, you're drinking the a, same thing, you're just drinking okay. a drink. And that's okay. I mean, like, you pick up your old friend to drink to drink, you know, because you know what you're getting. You talking about picking me up? Oh, it's the I don't insane. think you're picking me up. I weigh 240 pounds. I'm back to pick you up once. And then off to the hospital yep. for a broken spine. Hey, may I get out of work for a day? Thank you. I All right. It. Thank you. Enough rambling about whatever the heck I was rambling about. I don't about. think you're 240. Well, it's true. On the moon, I'm not though. I'm or much, even on the way to the moon. I'm much, I'm much lighter on the moon. Dainty. Uh, a feather. Let's let's talk about this Shamanix Estates. This is in Frenchic, South Africa, and this is one of those little boutique uh, wineries that uh, our good friend Andy at Elephant's Corner has turned us on to. This is a Cab Frock this time. We've done lots of different um, varietals all through South Africa. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, now we've done some blends that have Cab yeah, Franc. Yeah, but but I, they've, I, they're I, Bordeaux style I, blends. I want to say this is the first straight Cab Franc that we've yeah, done. Yeah, and then the Bordeaux style South African blends, they're like the fourth grade. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're not up front. Right. It's a balancing grade. Just like Bordeaux. Just oh, like so oh man, that knows. I so now this is one that I haven't had. This is a rarity. This I one I tell bought you, on blind faith from my good friend Andy because I trust him. I would I would call this South African without tasting it. Like you're always talking about how yeah. wines have a, mm -hmm. a place, yeah. a, you know, a characteristic. This has, uh, you can smell South Africa mm -hmm. on the nose. And it's not full on Pinotage, but you know, the, the reds in South Africa have that, I have a, I, I can't think of yeah. a, a right well, word. Well, I was talking about this to someone the other day that was like, like I was talking about Italian wines, like you can always tell when something's grown in Italy, Absolutely. but I can't tell you hey, what why? that description is. You just is. know, you just know. Yeah. And uh, I think it's true of a lot of places, but this has the bouquet of South Africa. It's lovely. Mm. So you're you're tasting for the first time on this. This is live very, and in person. This is very, this shows my confidence in Andy because I don't normally do this. I wouldn't do this actually. But I don't think you've ever done it. I wanted him to get my honest impression since we didn't get to sit down and taste. It's been really busy. He just got a container full of wine. Of course, we've been crazy busy. We've, we've been doing chef tables on Wednesday nights and Sunday nights. And it's just been chaotic, to say the least. And private party on Monday for you, chef. And, Always you know, It's so. just like, it's just been a never-ending barrage. We haven't carved out time. Anyway, but I do trust Andy. And he, I think he knows my palate. And I'm pretty sure I know his now. But... This is exactly how I described it. That's what I love about the guy. He, he gives me honest assessments. So that's so important. So cheers, you have that to, relationship. cheers to you, Andy. Yeah. What I will say about this, this is classic cab front in terms of uh, you're going to get those uh, those green piercings, little green bell pepper on the nose, on the palate. 
red fruit through and through. A little uh, bit of white pepper? Yes, certainly some pepper. Uh, pick your pepper, really. Could be pink, certainly white. Could be a little fine grind black, or could it be even, um, yeah, here's one that, uh, that comes up. For me, um, it's old black pepper. Like, so, you know, this is classic, you know, this is one of the biggest problems with people's spice racks, okay? The big difference between the spices you get in, in Europe, um, uh, uh, the Middle East, these spice markets, because they're fresh. They're super, super fresh. Super fresh. And most of the spices that we have in our cupboards are old AF. I almost, you got that, I almost, you, you pulled it right almost, back. You almost, it almost right cursed back. there, but I pulled it out. So, the spices, they lose their intensity over time, particularly when they're ground. You know, oh, you're the, releasing you know, all the into so you, the you, air. you've yeah. got you've got a ground cumin or coriander or pepper, whatever it is, sitting up there and you're covered for five years. How in the world could that taste the same as it did? Impossible. Yeah, you know, and so it just naturally loses flavor. So I see this a lot. People, most people buy black pepper. They can't find it, so they buy another one. They can't find. It. So now That's they have three, three or four, four yeah. in your in your guilty. cupboard. Everybody's guilty of it. And so you grab the one that's like five years old, and when you sprinkle it on things, it's not as intense black pepper flavor. It's more neutralized. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes for me, getting into, you know, it might be because I'm a chef, and, you know, like I've tasted pepper literally every day of my life. There are, to me, there's different phases of it, just like, you know, when we talk about, we're, we're, we're talking about flavor of fruit profiles, okay? It's a banana. Well, is it an underripe right. banana? Is it, is it a ripe right banana? Right. Is it a is it a caramelized banana? Right. Yeah, there's there's all the these things. Thing. Like you're talking about the or, apples or, earlier too. I mean, it's like there's twelve oh, apple flavors. Yellow. You got the gold. gold you got the, the green. green the the red. Gold, you know, it's a baking apple. Is it a, a fresh? You apple? get into yes. the skin. Yes. The, you know. So there's. So for me, I mean, I'm, you go the full spectrum where you can't just say a flavor. Right. It's like where's it living? Where's it living on the spectrum? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so for me. Even down to black pepper, I, I, I see kind of phases to it. Is it freshly right. cracked right over your uh, right over your salad? There's a reason why people want you to come over and go, fresh a pepper. Yeah, you like a fresh you like a pepper? Fresh pepper? Because it, it's, it's <clears throat> the aromatics, when that grind hits that full pepper, that whole peppercorn and cracks it open, that is a more aromatic pepper. But pepper that's been pre-ground, it's been sitting in the back of your cupboard for five years. It's, it's gone. It's still pepper. It's, it's, numb, it's still pepper. Though. Yeah, it's very dull. It's very and so sometimes, dull, I mean. sometimes I get that in a wine. You know what I mean? And that's not a negative thing. It's just a description. You know, there's there's one of the things that people, you know, when, the, when you say something like garden hose or cat pee or something like that, describe a uh, describe a wine. It's not the that's a bad thing. It's just the closest thing to describing it is that you can Especially get. in your mind. Yeah. And you normally grab the first thing that comes to your head, too, even though you'll pick up something later and go, God, I wish I would have said this, what I meant. But any sort of sensory hmm. um, thing that you remember, yeah. uh, uh, and this sensory nostalgia, you know, you're going to throw it right on. Absolutely, yeah. big time. So uh, going back to this description, uh, light in color, uh, you can see right through it. It's almost Pinot-ish, mm -hmm. but for a Cap Franc, but that's not, surprising. But not lacking in flavor. Mm -hmm. Great voluptuous mouthfeel here, but finishing with like, you know, a nice. I'm getting a really nice middle of the tongue dryness, mm -hmm. almost like, almost like I'm getting my tongue's turning a little bit of sandpaper. A little sandpaper there. Yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah, definitely. Buy but it. that that acidity really brings me back. I want, a, I want another taste. I want another taste. You know, vinegar, uh, you know, like ketchup, mustard, and all those things that, like, trigger your palate. Like, I want more. You know, like, you can eat a cold, bottom-of-the-bag French fry from some mm -hmm. takeout garbage place. You know, like, just, like, you filling your, filling your name of, of, of poison potatoes that you mm -hmm. bought, right? And, but if you have ketchup on it, you will you keep will eat coming it. back. You're like, look, keep, keep coming, coming back. back. And so that's the way I am with acidity in wine. The acidity for me really brings me back. I want more. This is a lot better than an old French fry. 
in ketchup chef is way better than ketchup too. So you get the idea. This is a, I'm enjoying this is what I'm saying. I want to keep drinking this. I want to keep getting into it. Well, it's unique. Uh, it, it has a lot of uh, things happening simultaneously mm -hmm. that you don't see happen simultaneously in other wines of, of similar name and style. Mm -hmm. I mean, for Cap Franc, one of my favorite. Oh yeah, favorite. Wines. It is so diverse. And you know? this is we, well, of so course we, we we love Chinons. Yeah, you know, the oh, French, the French. Yeah, okay, Loire. Uh, and then we get into Argentina with El Enemigo. And their even Cap some Franc. of the. You know, yeah, other offerings. California I mean, Cab Franc. California Cab Franc. Actually, uh, Virginia even, Cab Franc. You see, those are some like uh, the um, RV, uh, R um, RVD, and uh, I think um, um, what's the Charlottesville place? The um, uh, Barbersville. Barbersville has an outstanding Cab Franc. Yeah, mm -hmm. I totally agree. By Jefferson that. too. Uh, but I love Cab Francs all around the world. And of course, let's not forget about France uh, and Bordeaux, where it's used as a blend. But what I want to say about this, this is very clean, very fresh, and uh, it's not heavy like South America, which it can be really heavy. Oh, I think. But even your and boy good, Paul not, Hobbs makes a nice Cab Franc. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah and it's, it's richer. Though. It's a lot richer. It's richer. Yeah. This is really light on its feet. I don't know. It's called a reserve, but... I'm sorry, Andy. I don't know why it's a reserve. You'll have to explain to me what that means in South Africa. Um, I don't know that that's a designation. Or it's just like in, in in America where reserve doesn't mean anything. But it, it, this is designated reserve in 2020. So obviously they think something very something highly of it. Something special about it, yeah. Uh, I just don't know if that's an official designation. I'll find out hopefully uh, when Andy sees this. He'll... Or if he sees it. Gosh, I hope he sees it. I hope he sees it, too. He gets a lot of play on here. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we really respect him and, and we're excited mm -hmm. to have him here. We, Gosh, if y'all didn't make it to that wine dinner, shame well, we're on you. We had a blast. Soon. Yeah, we're we didn't do another. His portfolio is ginormous. Yo, we, should, we, we, have could do, we could do 10 of them yep. and never circle mm -hmm. to a wine. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, Chef, I've rambled on about this, but you know, for me – this is kind of what I go through when I'm tasting wines. I have to go through all this. Then well, I get to, I get to record you doing it. Yeah, you because know, you're usually process. you're usually having it for the first time. It's not usually mm -hmm. me. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. So you you're going to all of your. Did you push that glass away? Oh, just for now, until I finish talking about the food. You don't want any more wine? I do want more wine. Which one do you want? Yes. I like one. While you're thinking about what to pair with this, you should probably be tasting it because I think that'll help you with the with the brainstorming. Well, we're for sure going Bavet on on this on the South African Cab Franc. Oh, okay. So we're gonna do a, a grilled Bavet, and we're gonna go goat cheese gnocchi, uh, which is gonna give a great chew to stand mm -hmm. up to this wine. We're gonna shave a little black truffle over it, touch of cream. Love it. Yeah, a little cheese. Beautiful. Yeah, I th and it's very French. Yep. You know, so South yep. Africa has a lot of French uh, I, style I love in their the wine idea of and some their cream with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna it's uh, gonna help. Yeah, that fat. Yeah, the cheese and the cream, mm -hmm. a little truffle. And this right is also front. sub thirty, folks. Sub thirty. Um, you know, somewhere in the mid to upper twenties. Haven't really figured out what it's gonna be yet, but it's gonna be under thirty. I can guarantee you that. And that is a keeper. I, I would imagine with this acidity, it, it can it can stay on a on a wine shelf is at least five years. But I don't know that you would necessarily need to or want to. God, can you imagine walking by this every day for five no, years? No, I wouldn't. It. I wouldn't. I'd just drink it. I'd drink it and order more but later. Another uh, a wonderful selection. Boutique wineries is certainly their specialty. Elephant's Corner. They just continue to deliver to us. And so we delivered to you guys. We're the middleman, I guess. But um, can't do it without it. We appreciate it. So, yep, absolutely. We've got two absolutely amazing pairings for you. So you should be extremely happy if you're watching this video with your with your pickup kit. And if you're not with the pickup kit, you know you can always watch this video and go out and find these wines and, and watch along. And Voila. hey, please comment on our on our. <coughs> on our post tell us what you think about these wines please we, interact we this, love to interact we're, this taste is an opinion 
it's not an absolute. So don't take our words for it. If you taste this and you say, hey, what, Ed, you forgot to mention this, or Chris, wouldn't, wouldn't this, wouldn't this be great? Was, or yeah. tell us what you did do. Yeah, it. tell yeah, us what you did love, do. We'd love to know. We'd love to, we'd love to see you interact with us on, on our uh, social media. And, uh, of course, this is going to be on YouTube until otherwise noted. But uh, we've got probably 50 or 60 or 80. I don't know how many episodes we got. We've got but a lot. We're going to keep doing them until y'all quit watching them. And we're going to keep drinking. Well, we're going to keep drinking, whether y'all watch or not. Yeah, we don't need the camera on for all of the drinking. That's true. Just for the, the knowledgeable drinking. So we got uh, we got our five-course prefix meals on the weekends if you want to come yeah, in and have five come ones. Out tonight. Yep. Yep, and come out th and come out for Thursday night tastings at six, and uh, we have chef's table reservations for Sundays and Wednesdays whenever you get a chance to come out. And keep in mind that the restaurants close while we're doing that, Absolutely. which just makes it really intimate. Like this last Sunday, we had a wonderful, really wonderful experience with one of our veterans. Exp uh, when I say veterans, I mean he's he's been following us around for a long time. Long time. Mr. Uh, Burt Wood three, and Mary, and Mary Beth on their 40th anniversary spent it with us and we had a great time and um, can't wait to see them again but uh, they they were here for that and did the chef's table and then we had of course two newbies from South Kakalaki that were really big foodies that had a great time they were we so actually hung out probably half hour 45 oh, yeah, minutes least, afterwards after just, just hanging out just talking. hanging out talking yep. and uh, just great great yep. people so yep. so nice to get to know them mm -hmm. it was yep so all walks of life come to the chef's table um and we would love to have you there too it's a, it's a great experience uh, just carve out four hours because yeah, we're, we're, we're good carve out one and a half come see us <laughs> for a lunch shift yeah that, we did oh that's another chef we booked a couple other chefs tables for lunch too yeah. i don't think i told you that you didn't yeah they're, they're, right. they're they're picking up uh they continue to pick up and that's a great way we to spend that. an afternoon it is. It only really three is. courses so you don't have to uh, you're not bogged down yeah and it's yeah. during the daylight hours so there's always that it's it's a it's a, it's a lot of fun Yep. We enjoy doing it. We appreciate you listening to us talk about wine and food and all things Old North State Winery and Restaurant has to offer. And we hope that one day we will see you in person. But until then, we'll keep seeing you right here on our YouTube channel. And uh, well, catch you next time. Thank you all. See ya.